Welcome to Mastering Etsy Print On Demand, the completely free course that I've created to help you be your own product boss from anywhere in just pockets of time. Welcome to Simply Pod, which is my framework for mastering print on demand. We'll dive into this a little more later, but just know that my goal is to show you the ropes, help you build out a strategic approach for print on demand success, and give you a results based grip on driving sales using the Simply Pod framework that I've developed and that this entire free course is based off of. In case we haven't met yet, hey there friend, my name is Mandy, I'm a busy Midwest boy mama, former HR director turned full-time handmade small business entrepreneur, and builder of print-on-demand shops that all together have reached almost six figures in less than a year, all while not having to touch a single product or ship anything out to a customer myself. I'm obsessed with sharing knowledge that simplifies the Etsy print-on-demand process so that truly anyone can feel empowered to start their own journey. I've got so many great topics packed into this course that will take you step-by-step through the entire framework and process that I've used to scale and grow my own print-on-demand business in just pockets of time so that you too can experience freedom from fulfillment in a successful business. In this first module, we'll be diving into the very basics of print on demand in case you're very new to the process, including what is print on demand, pros and cons of it, how and why I got started, why I chose Etsy as my platform of choice, the real costs of starting, and of course, expectations and mindset of getting into this style of business. Definitely make sure you stay till the end where I will be introducing the full concept of my Simply Pod framework that this entire course is based off of. I'll cover all the exciting modules that are ahead and you'll get your first homework assignment. That's right, folks. This is going to be a hands-on experience because at the end of nearly every module, you will have a homework assignment. I have structured this purposefully so that by the end of module four, you will have a winning list of products, designs, and SEO and feel empowered to handle your own print-on-demand shop like a boss. Let's not waste another second and let's dive right on in from the very beginning. So what is print-on-demand? It's simply a different way of doing business. You create your own shops with products and when a customer orders, somebody else is packaging and shipping those orders for you. You don't have to touch any of the products yourself. You simply create the product and the print-on-demand provider ships and send it off to your customer for you. There are definitely some benefits of running a business in this style. For one, there is zero inventory, which means there is less waste. There is less unsold product hanging out on a shelf somewhere because products are only printed and used when someone orders. There's also zero production for you as the seller. You're not having to touch anything. You're not having to fulfill or ship anything. Your print-on-demand provider handles all of that for you, which also means there's a huge variety of products and you are not limited to the design possibilities. On the flip side of that, because I definitely try to be real here, is that there is little or no control over packaging. While there are some providers that have a few options, most of them are keeping their overhead and waste low and their costs lower so that you can give the most affordable price for your customer, which means they're handling everything in the most streamlined economic fashion possible. Because someone else is handling your product, that also means that sometimes you might run into quality issues. They come up, there is definitely human error that can be involved, and you just need to know how to deal with it. There are also potential provider delays that are outside of your control. Again, manageable, they do happen. You just need to know how to work with your printing partner and your customer to make sure that there is a seamless solution along the way. And of course, there are lower profit margins. Print on demand is not a handmade model. The entire premise of it is that somebody else is doing the sourcing and fulfilling of these products for you while you handle the design and optimization and customer service side of your shop. So you just need to be aware that it is a different business model. So does that mean it's right for you? Well, the ultimate bigger question is, 
are you willing to put in the effort to make it successful? There's a big difference in those questions, and that's something I can't answer for you. I can only give you the tools and be transparent in letting you know that there is work involved, as with any successful business. But if you're ready to dive in, I'm ready to do it right along with you, so let's go. Before I dive too far in, let's talk about how the heck I got here. I actually spent most of my career in HR. I also spent some time doing IT project management. I've worn lots of hats over the years. I started my handmade natural skincare business on Etsy in 2017 while I continued working full time as an HR director at a mental health agency here in Minnesota until 2021. Massive burnout from the pandemic led me to going all in on this handmade business full time. That being said, I've had a lot of side hustles over the year. I have what I call big side hustle energy. I've done digital downloads over the years. I've tapped into tie dye and ice dyed apparel if you've ever seen that. I've done screen print transfers. I have a whole heat press upstairs. It was a thing for a while. I've dabbled in Amazon KDP. I actually have um, a really neat small business planner that I still have posted out there. I've done lots of things over the years. I even had a cupcake business for about three years before our son was born. So I am not new to small business. I am not new to the hustle whatsoever. I was pretty good at all of it, but quite frankly, loved none of it, or at least not enough to continue doing it long term. And remember, all of these were on top of my existing handmade full-time business. And so there were definitely some lessons that I learned in pursuing these. One of them, inventory is super expensive. Because I already have a handmade business, I already deal with a lot of inventory at any given time. And so I can tell you that not every idea is going to sell. And the same thing rings true with apparel, clothing, all of that. Supplies and inventory, a lot of space is needed for that, especially if you're thinking about sweatshirts or things like that to have multiple sizes and multiple colors takes up more room than you would think, folks. And quite frankly, being a maker of all means that you're putting in all of that time and labor into making whatever product it is that you're designing and selling. And so through all of this, my thought was, maybe I'm not cut out to fulfill more orders. But I want to be super clear. There's lots of creators that run similar businesses successfully that I chose not to pursue. There are tons of great businesses that are using screen print transfers or crickets to make amazing designs and sell tons of them. But here's the thing. Not every business is right for every person in every season. And then that's what I love learned in this process of trying out various side hustles is that I needed to do something that I loved and that could be sustainable if I wanted to do something outside of just the handmade business that I was already running full time. Same thing runs through if you are going to a nine to five job or if you are working full time as a stay at home mom because that's work folks. Um, so just think about where you are in this season of life. And just know that there are options out there for if you want to pursue something and have pockets of time to do it, there are definitely ways to make that happen. But if you hate doing something, you will never have a passion for making it successful, no matter how much time or energy or money you try and throw at it. And that's where this concept of what I call freedom from fulfillment comes into play. I can design as much as I want. Designing is what really gets my engine running. That's why I chose gears for this image. There was some imagery there. It really is something that I enjoy, but making all those designs and then trying to put them on things and not knowing if they're going to sell, 
that's not a great way of doing business if you just constantly want to put out all of these designs. And so with this, I can design as much as I want, design on whatever I want. I'm not limited to things that I can find in bulk or as blanks. And at the end of the day, somebody else handles the rest. So all of the parts that bring me joy are part of this. And none of the parts that I really didn't enjoy, like the packaging and the shipping and the things that I didn't really have time for, I don't have to do any of those. I just get to do the part that I love. So how's it going? I started this less than a year ago now. It was in about May of 2022 that I really hit the ground running. I dabbled in it earlier in the year in terms of research and figuring out what I wanted to do and use, but really didn't start selling actively until May. And so in that time, it's now March 1st at the time of this recording, I am on track to hit six figures in less than a year. Right now I'm at about 90,000 in revenue. I've had more than 2,500 sales across a variety of niches with over a thousand of my different designs. That being said, Navigating print on demand does have plenty of nuances. As I said in the very beginning, it's a different model of business and it can feel very overwhelming with the amount of options and choices that are out there. And so my goal in all of this is to really keep things simple for you and uncomplicate the process for you so that it's easier to understand. Let's dive into some basic fundamentals and navigating some of the many choices that are out there as you're thinking about a print-on-demand business. The biggest thing that you'll hear out there is Etsy versus, well, everything else, right? There's Etsy, there's Shopify, there's Wix, there's Amazon merch, there's eBay. All of these different options that are out there, good, bad, or indifferent, there are lots of opinions. And here's my take on it as someone who's used Etsy and Wix and Shopify over the course of several years in my small business world. So with Etsy, yes, we all know that there's fees. Welcome to any business. Head to any social media platform that's out there and you'll hear all sorts of less than encouraging things about our friends over at Etsy. And I'm quite frankly not here to debate on any of those because many of them are based in at least a little bit of truth. But here's what I can tell you. Etsy is a business. Print on demand is a business. Businesses are not free, period. But here's what that goes into. Etsy draws in millions of shoppers every single year. In 2022, they were at over 90 million shoppers coming to their platform. And they're driving a lot of that traffic with ads and Google and analytics and things that they invest in on their end as part of that. And they invest millions in ad placement, including Google. They have other large partners that they work with, like BuzzFeed, to get features. So they are bringing a lot of customers to you and to their platform as part of being in their marketplace. And while paid ads that you hear about are helpful in scaling faster, and I will talk about those in a later module, they're not required in order to get sales. So just keep all of that in mind. As someone who has operated on other websites and with wholesale platforms like FAIR, where they're taking 15 to 25% of your cut, 6.5% plus transaction fees that any other website is going to charge you is not that bad, you guys. So let's just keep some perspective. Private websites, on the other hand, Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, there's lots of platforms out there. On Etsy, if you build it, customers will come eventually. On a private website like these, they're not going to come to you automatically. Just because you built it does not mean anyone will come to your site, which means you need to build it before you can even start listing a product. They have monthly subscription fees. On the lower end these days, you might find one for $24 or $25 a month. 
but most of them due to just the rise of cost and everything that goes into managing those websites and platforms are going up significantly. Shopify is raising their prices because I'm on their platform as part of my handmade business. They're raising it to $39 a month unless you are, go on to their annual plan. So it gets really expensive really fast. And if you're not making sales for a month or two, those are costs that are just going right out the window and doesn't factor in things like ads or marketing or anything else. And keep in mind that there are still transaction fees anytime you accept online payment. What people don't always realize is that, yes, Etsy is charging you the 9.5%, 10%. Only 6.5% is kind of their Etsy marketplace fee. Most of the rest of it is a standard transaction fee that comes with processing a credit card online. And any platform is going to have that expense. That's just the nature of it. So I don't think everyone quite realizes that part of that is just standard business operations. And as I alluded to earlier, you've got to be able to create your own traffic. Typically, you know, if you've got a social media following that's sizable, or if you've got a large community of folks around you, you might have some success with word of mouth or simply putting it out on social media if you've got a particular community that you're trying to engage already. But if you don't have that, if you don't have a following, like I have a pretty small per personal bubble, I don't have a huge personal following. And so if you don't have that, that means that your money is going to be going into ads and marketing. And I will tell you right now, in order for those to be successful, you are putting lots of money into Facebook ads and other social media ads and Google ads to get any sort of traffic to your website. Another platform that you may have heard about is actually one that's owned by Etsy. Etsy has its own platform called Pattern. You see it typically when you are first setting up your shop. They give you the option to use their Pattern platform. My short answer to that is just no. Uh, there's absolutely no reason why you need it. It's still running off of your Etsy shop. And so while you get some discounts on things like Etsy ads and a few other small things, it's definitely not worth it for the added cost of having that monthly subscription to have an Etsy pattern website. There's really no other benefit. If you're wanting it because you think that's the only way that you can have your own.com or have it look like a real website, get your own domain. Go to godaddy.com or something similar, buyer.com that you want for your shop. And simply from there, you can redirect it to the URL of your Etsy shop if that's what you're wanting. If otherwise, until you have an established brand or an established shop, there's really no reason. What I recommend is start with Etsy by waiting and setting it up down the road or even running it alongside your Etsy later on. You'll be able to test out designs within Etsy, find out what works, find out what's profitable and people are interested in, and then translate that and move your best sellers to a website down the road um, where you can direct traffic there once you have that established. Don't complicate things more than you need to early on. Etsy's giant marketplace will bring you sales. You just need to know how to navigate it properly. Same thing with eBay and Amazon Merch. There's nothing wrong with those. Amazon Merch is super hard to get into. Most people are not accepted on their first try. Again, I personally just like using Etsy. It's way easier to navigate. That's just my personal take on those. Another common misconception that I just wanted to mention quickly as well is within the print-on-demand realm, sometimes you'll hear about sites like Redbubble, or Society6 or Spoonflower. There are a variety of other websites that are print on demand websites, meaning that you take your design and essentially you're selling your artwork on products that they're already sourcing and creating and you essentially get royalties off of that so if you if something sells and it's got your design on it you're getting as the artist or designer of that you're getting royalties on that sale 
It's usually only a couple of bucks, if that, depending on what the product is. And they're doing all of the work on their end. You're not handling any of the transactions. You are not the keeper of the shop. They are. They are simply using your designs that you have uploaded and essentially approved for them to sell on your behalf as a licensed more or less artist. That is very different than print on demand services, which is what I teach and talk about and what we will be diving into. Print on demand services, like what we'll talk about, are doing the fulfillment for you, but you are still in control of your shop. You're setting the price. You're establishing which products you want to have with which design on them. So just bear in mind that there are differences and what we're talking about in this module in this course are print on demand services and how to use those to set up your own shop under your own brand to sell. And now we start to get into really the meat and potatoes of behind the scenes and how print on demand really works. There is a cost to starting print on demand. That is if you want to do it well. At its very basis, print on demand is technically free to start. Other than the 20 cents for an Etsy listing, you don't have to pay anything until an order is placed. But you want to be successful, right? I want you to be successful. And to do that, you do need to make some small investments. And so that's what I want to cover is where to prioritize your investments, what that looks like and how much we're talking about in this business when you're just getting started. So some things are free or at least very close to it. Again, Etsy, there is technically no cost to open an Etsy. You can hop on over there right now and start an Etsy shop and your first listing will cost you 20 cents to post that listing. That's it. That is your entire investment right there to just open your shop. You can also go design some things for free. Canva is a platform that I use a lot for print on demand and we'll walk through that in another module in the designing module, but it's free to start. They have a free plan. You don't have to upgrade to their pro plan. So that is free to start as well. And then there's competition research. And again, you might think that there could be a cost to this. And there are plenty of platforms out there. But at the end of the day, the resource that I like to use for research when it comes to what's out there and what's selling out in Etsy is EtsyHunt.com. You can create a login and you can download their Etsy Hunt and Etsy Tag Chrome extensions, and they're completely free. They do have an upgrade plan from there for some of their other keyword search and other trending things that you can look at, but at its very basic usage and for the Chrome extensions, which is what I primarily use it for, totally free. And finally, what I call shop copywriting. And so this isn't copyright in terms of copying someone else's work. This is actual copywriting as in writing some of the components for your shop, like descriptions and the announcement section or your about section. There's a great tool out there. If you haven't heard of AI just yet, just go turn on the news. There's a great tool out there called ChatGPT. It's a free AI tool. And I use it all the time for writing my product descriptions and some of the other real basic things for my shop. It's pretty cool and it's totally free. On the flip side of that, some things are not free, but are necessary. So again, these are areas where are they required in some cases? No, but they are in my mind absolutely necessary to be successful whether you use these exact products or something like them. I've tried to source products that, again, I use myself. I use all of these and I trust them and I think they are great, but they are also very affordable. 
So the first is the print provider. And again, I will be talking about these options in the product module. I use Printify. So similar to Etsy, your print provider in most cases that I've seen, they don't charge you anything to create an account, set up your products and to get started. If they are charging you something, change it out because you don't need to pay for anything upfront with print on demand. So it's zero dollars to set it up. But the reason I have it in this some things are not free category is because I don't want there to be any confusion because you do have to pay for the cost of the item when someone orders and only when someone orders unless you're ordering samples and then you have to pay for those obviously. The other important investment that I think absolutely needs to be made is SEO and keyword research. Again in later module we will be taking a very deep dive into this and walking through that. But if I had to pick just one paid service for this, I would go with eRank and I do go with eRank.com. Their absolute basic monthly plan is $5.99 a month currently. Um, and that gives you more than enough of what you need to use their website to do proper keyword research. They do technically let you use some things for free, but you're just not going to get the keyword data that you really need without paying for just their basic one. And finally, the other thing that you'll want to be prepared to invest in upfront is mockups. These are critical and I can't stress enough how important it is to not skimp on this area. I typically purchase the mockups that I use from other Etsy sellers when possible. Look for bundles. There are some awesome ones out there. You just need to run a search on whatever product you're using and then add in mockup after it and there will be some great options. Typically for an individual mock-up, you're looking at a range from about three to six dollars for most of the decent ones. But again, look for whole shop bundles. There's a lot of great Etsy sellers out there who do a phenomenal job. You don't need a ton of them to start out with, but definitely get a couple so that you've got some variety in your shop and so that you can test out different colors and styles and designs from the mock-up side of things too. Again, we'll take a deep, dive in the design module that we've got coming up but just know again it's definitely an investment that you'll want to think about and be prepared for up front to be a successful shop and again an important distinction that i want to make sure is super clear as it relates to the cost of print on demand a lot of new sellers really get tripped up on this notion of how they pay for orders and then when Etsy pays them. So as you can see on the screen is really just the basis of how print on demand works. Customer orders from your Etsy shop, print on demand provider automatically receives the order, they print and ship it to your customer, and then Etsy will pay you for the sale. Now, what I want to make clear is that at this point, when the provider receives it and before it goes into production, that is when you will be charged for the cost of that order and the cost of shipment when it goes into production. So that means you need to be able to have funds available to pay for that item at the time it's ordered, which will not be the same time when Etsy pays you. Just know that you need to have those funds available. Which brings us to our last foundational concept for this module. A lot of times print on demand is this get rich quick pitch of post a product and suddenly you'll sell thousands in a day. I'm sorry to burst your bubble, friends, but that's just not how it works. And quite frankly, that's not how any business works. So let's dispel some very common red flag expectations right now, talk about the actual reality of it, and then the right mindset to have for this business. If any of these are what you are going into as an expectation for print on demand, let's talk about them you've got this cute boss babe or boss life t-shirt design super cute everyone will buy it sorry not gonna happen you post 20 things and now you'll just wait and see what happens because maybe it's just oversaturated 
nope, that's not going to work either. Disney stuff or Stranger Things stuff, or I see all these things with vacation with ears that are designed on Etsy for vacation shirts. Those look popular. I'll design. Let's not do that either, guys. It's been two months. Shouldn't I be making lots of money by now? Or it's been three months or six months. Well, not quite. The reality is that print on demand is a business. You need to understand it and you need to have some tools in your toolbox in order to be successful. And you also need to understand some pretty basic concepts of selling in retail in general, especially on a platform like Etsy that has over 7 million other sellers out there competing for those 90 million buyers that are shopping every year. Generic designs with generic phrases are a dime a dozen on Etsy. Be creative. You need to be able to scale your listings, learn what works, and do more of that. In my experience, your first goal should be 100 listings, and I will show you the tools that I use and the method that I use to get there really fast with pretty minimal effort. I will say this now and I will say this forever. Say no to Disney designs and any other brands, trademarks, copyrights. I know those might not be familiar terms right now, but I just know that we'll walk through some of those more legal specifics in the design module. And then finally, new shops take time to get momentum. Be patient and persistent. If you're chomping at the bit two weeks after you posted your first listing, wondering what's wrong and if you should just give up, no, don't give up. Keep going. You are at the beginning of your journey at that point and haven't even begun to get traction with Etsy at that point. So keep going, which all boils down to getting your mindset right from the very beginning. Etsy is creating the demand. They are bringing in the customers to its marketplace. That is Etsy's job and that's what we need to understand in this business, especially for using Etsy as our chosen platform. Etsy is a business and their job is to create the demand and bring more customers to its marketplace. That's their job. Your job, on the other hand, is to channel those customers to your shop by having desirable designs, by setting yourself apart from everyone else who's using the same designs across their shops. It's your job to channel those customers by having a good design strategy and good solid keyword optimization within your shop. It takes time and learning from your mistakes. Your first few listings, I'm gonna tell you right now, probably won't be that great and that's okay. And the few after that might not be that great either. I have plenty of designs that are no longer in my shop because I looked back and said, ooh, that, mm, nope. So that is okay. We are all going to go through that phase and there's nothing wrong with that because it is a learning process. But the biggest thing that sets apart successful Etsy print-on-demand sellers and those that aren't are those who keep going, keep pushing, keep being consistent in designs and trying new things and working on and being a good student of their own shop and the marketplace they are in. Keep going. Because remember, while it is freedom from fulfillment, it's not freedom from doing any work ever. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're not being truthful because you need to be willing to put in that work if you want the end result of having a more passive shop and having that freedom from fulfillment. But you'll get there. You really will. You just need to work for it. Which brings me to why I have this course in the first place and what my goal is with having this free course available to everyone on YouTube. And that is to really simplify 
print on demand as a process and bring you the fundamental framework that I've used and refined in order to find success with Etsy print on demand. I'm a process and visuals girl. So let me show you what that means and what the rest of these modules will be all about. So you can see with the visual, there's kind of three cornerstones or as I call them foundations of success. And what I believe is that by focusing on mastering these first, you then become confident and have a very strong foundation for building and sustaining a successful shop. So that includes your products. So what products you choose, the cost that you set them at, the quality that they are. It also includes your SEO strategy or your search engine optimization of your tags and keywords, because without it, no one will find your product. That is the way Etsy Marketplace works. That is the key to unlocking getting views and traction with your listings on Etsy. And then finally, your design and the types of design in the style that you choose and your target audience or niche that you choose, the mock-ups that you use, all of these things work together to build that strong foundation of success for your shop. And so I focus on establishing these first and establishing good practices and strategies with these first so that you can get competent with the basics and then build on that. Because individually, each of these three areas will mean absolutely nothing unless you are getting all three of them right. So for example, if you have the best design on the best product, but your SEO is garbage and you're just using very generic terms, no one's going to see it. And on the flip side, if you've done all of your research on SEO and are using great keywords in a wonderful, profitable target audience or niche, but your design isn't great or you've put it on a terrible mock-up, that's not going to sell either. So everything in these three areas has to work together to be successful and you need to focus and prioritize these areas first and then once you've established confidence and understand those foundations in those three areas you can then start to layer in activities that are going to help sustain that success. And so we start building on that and integrating these concepts that are going to support your shop. And so that's things like consistency and adding more listings and doing product updates and self auditing and doing new research. It's also providing the value. So really establishing a good customer service experience, making advanced offerings in your shop, such as group listings or adding things like customization as an option for your shop. Those take a little more time and skill, but again, add more value to the customer in a new and different way. And then traffic. This is one that we all try to start with first, but really is more that integrated support once you've established everything else. So Etsy marketing and having a social media presence if you choose to, or leveraging Pinterest or an email list. Those are all things that you can add on later once you get those first three things right. And so that is why I have set up all of the upcoming modules in a very intentional order and structure to help you build on each of those concepts to take you on that complete journey using the exact framework that I have created and followed for my own successful shops. So that's going to be in addition to this introductory module. There are six more regular modules coming up again in a very intentional order that I really encourage you to follow in that order, at least your first time through. And then there are a couple bonus of videos weaved in as well so that I can show you click by click how I set up a brand new shop and also how I add on some of those more advanced personalization features as well. All of that so that you still feel confident and know that that freedom from fulfillment is within reach. So as promised, I said that there would be homework and we are at that time, folks. So 
for your very first homework assignment. In the description link down below, you will find this brainstorming worksheet. So step one for your print on demand journey is I want you to take that worksheet and I want you to just sit down and brainstorm. I want you to list out three hobbies that your close friend love to do, three occupations that you or a relative or friend have, and then three topics that aren't necessarily hobbies, but that you're really passionate about. So that's the first step. And then the second step of that is I want you to head out to Etsy and type in each item from each list. So search them one at a time. So for example, in this last one, if a book club is your example, head on out to Etsy and type in book club. Circle each item on your list that has one or more related listings with a popular now or bestseller badge. Popular now will appear right below the image and you'll see that little yellow badge. Bestseller, depending on your view, Etsy kind of moves this around a little bit, but typically if it's showing up on like the first page and has several sales for that shop, then typically if you click into it, you'll see that bestseller right under the title and price for that item. So you might need to dig a little bit, but again, this is an activity of researching and just seeing what's out on Etsy that is popular and is selling well. So keep in mind that is our goal. We wanna see based on the topics that you wrote down, what's popular and what is selling well. And that's why we're looking for those two tags, popular now and bestseller. So your worksheet should look something like this once you are done doing that research. Make those circles, pen to paper, write it down, make some circles, folks. And then step three is observe. So when you're circling those items on your list, make some notes, do some kind of thinking on it. What types of products were bestsellers? Were there any unique ideas that you came across that were kind of cool products that you might want to explore more and then take note of keywords that were used in the title that seem to be a common thread with those items. So do that homework and then come back for module two where we'll start to take a deep dive into products and the variety of options that are out there for print on demand. And again, make sure you stick around for all of the great material that is coming your way in this free course. Stay tuned and see you on the next one.